Hey guys, Dark Humility here. Today we have a fully loaded Hardcore Inferno Sork on Season 9 PD2. If you guys didn't know it already, Inferno is insane. I had already made a starter video so you guys could see how like an early mid game build is easily and capably farming LOD areas and getting rich off of those. Well, we actually did get pretty rich off of the farming off that build. Um, just in LOD areas, and I ended up trading for and finding a bunch of items that have transitioned this build now into a more, I'd say, like mid-late game now, or maybe late game mapper type Inferno Sork. If you think the Inferno Sork can only be a starter build, you would be wrong. This build is fully equipped and extremely powerful, ready to tank and deal damage super fast, super effectively, and areas and maps without fire res or fire um fire immunity we'll go over of course the stats the skills and the gear on both the mercenary and myself first and then of course like is customary we'll do some mapping demos so you can see what this character is made of she is both extremely tanky and deals a ton of damage and has insane sustain so you don't have to worry about glugging potions she doesn't really, she uh, has very few issues when it comes to mapping, and overall, it's a build that can work very well in softcore and hardcore. On the softcore, I'll tell you about some things I might do a little differently that you can do as choices, but you honestly don't have to because the build is so smooth on the softcore as well. There's definitely some ways to get even more damage though if that's what you're looking for. Um, it might help out with some tier 3 maps or some slightly harder content. But overall, uh, that's what's going to be going down. So we're going to be showing the awesome build I've made here this season. Um, I do plan on making a Paladin as well, though, so it's going to be kind of fun to do. But anyway, let's show off what we've been able to do on these level 90 hardcore Inferno Sork. So stats, pretty basic stuff. Just enough strength to wear your gear. Uh, you're not going to need any decks in this build. You can see her damage is also pretty freaking high. Um, it can get even higher, of course, but we'll explain how. Um, there's definitely some plus skills that are missing on this potential build, but um, you can get it closer to like 70k damage with a couple of small modifications. And of course, you also have vitality and energy. So on the soft core, I would just pump all your points into energy and I'd go max energy shield because of how efficient it is. Um, however, if your energy shield ever goes out, um, that can lead to you dying pretty fast on hardcore, so I do recommend maybe getting a decent amount of vitality. It does depend though on how good your life or GCs are though. If I had like around 40 plus life on all of my uh, Grand Charms, I might consider just putting all my points in energy anyway, and then I would have over 2,000 mana. So that's kind of cool. But as you can see, like, I'd say like somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 life on Hardcore should be fine though. Um, you can have more if you feel a little bit safer with that, but your your mana is really your buffer. This thing is what's going to prevent you from taking very much damage at all. And if you max an energy shield, the this amount of mana is more efficient than this amount of health. It's actually about as efficient as... Hmm, let's see here. About... Roughly like 2200 health on top of this health as well. So you're basically as tanky as a barbarian as long as you don't lose your energy shield. So that's a fun fact. Um, anyway, can you explain that math? Well, it's based on energy shield. So if you guys don't know, in Season 9, you get both the effects of telekinesis and energy shield by maxing energy shield itself. Telekinesis is no longer... A synergy that makes your mana more efficient but basically now every point of mana is about I mean according to this it's about 13% more efficient than every point of life and so that's gonna make your mana quite a bit more efficient I guess that would really come down to about 2200 2100 mana but it's like 21 20 to 200 life or something so that's pretty good anyway maxing out energy shield is pretty key to making this build tanky so it's very important but we're not going to go over that just yet anyway I kind of talked about this but in general you want a lot of energy um, energy is really good it's going to make you very tanky on this build um, 
you can go max energy or you can go some points in a vita maybe if you're lacking a tiny bit of life just to make sure that you don't get wrecked or one shot or something so that'd be pretty nice um, res you always want max res and hell if you can pretty good stuff uh, we have a ton of fire res due to an item on the mercenary which is kind of cool but you'll notice though that they, with the items we have we also have really good fire and lightning res overall so you don't really have to worry about taking damage from those elements all that much uh, you also have of course damage reduction damage reduction really is not a thing you need to worry about on software I would say like you could probably go with zero if you wanted to or at least the amount provided just by the defiance or on the mercenary so that'd be like nine um, we do have some more though on hardcore once again just allows it to where the damage that good that does apply to her life does get reduced one thing to note is that the res and the DR um, only applies to damage that is taken to your life so that further mitigates any amount of damage it actually does go to your life after it goes through the energy shield, which is already at 77%, which means that 77% of the damage is going towards the mana pool, and 23% is going towards the life pool. So, there's that. Now, if I put on a memory staff, which gives us 9 energy shield, I could have 89 percent and so very little at that point is being directed to the life but any amount that is is getting further mitigated by res and anything else also to note that if you lose your energy shield due to going down to zero mana you will still have dr and you will still um not you know instantly die which is kind of useful i personally think so that's neat um, you do tend to take a lot of damage to mana from like, uh, or energy shield in general from elemental attacks versus physical attacks, so keep that in mind. Also, when physical attacks are infused by elemental damage, such as through map stats, that will further reduce the effectiveness of the mana in your energy shield. So that is how that goes. Um, anyway, so those are the stats that are pretty important. And notice we even have some defense as well. Um, it is kind of nice, uh with this particular setup of gear, you can actually get a decent amount of defense to at least reduce the likelihood that the monsters will hit you, so that's kind of cool. And that will also further make you a little bit tankier. Um, I personally think it is worth it to get the Shiver Armor, but honestly, it's not a priority to get the Shiver Armor. If you feel like it's costing too many points or you don't want to get to a high level, uh, you're not going to worry about that, but we'll talk about more of that when we get to skills. Anyway. Uh, hit recovery, since we don't have max maximum block, hit recovery is kind of important. But so little damage is going to our life, we're probably not likely to be put in hit recovery. This is more of a fail safe if you lose the energy shield. So, that's always kind of nice to have at least maybe 42, somewhere between 42 to 86 on hardcore, I would say. On softcore, I don't even know if I'd bother with this stat either. Um, FCR, now... I think I've said in the previous video about the starter Inferno Sork, but the Inferno skill itself does not deal more damage based on faster cast rate. Um, the animation's a little faster, but not too much. And when it comes down to faster cast rate, the main thing you're, that's benef uh, being benefited by faster cast rate is teleport. That's it. Um, it's still nice to have decent teleport speed. So, like, this is not insane teleport speed, but in a map, you're pretty much waiting through, like, a sea of monsters. So you don't have to, like, teleport to get to the monsters. All you have to do is teleport in front of them, or use Blaze to run up to them. And, of course, Blaze will increase our faster run walk. So, either way, FCR is... This is actually a Sork build where FCR is not insanely important. If you feel like those really high FCR items, like 20 FCR rings, are really expensive... Don't worry, you don't actually need any. So that's actually kind of cool. You also don't need insanely expensive staves either for this very same reason. That being said, on other versions of this build, I can definitely see you justifying hitting the 105 FCR breakpoint, especially if you're using a different item like Ming Song's Lesson. So, 63 is good, 105 is good. Anything slower than 63 and it might start slowing down your mapping speed a little bit, but keep in mind that this channeling spell does not use faster cast rate. It will always channel and do damage, even at zero FCR, so um, not an insanely high priority stat, oddly enough, for this sorceress. And then, life and uh, HP per kill can be somewhat important, but on this current build, um, it is not. So depending on your gear, it could be. Um, 
pretty key if you're not using Phoenix. If you are using Phoenix, it's not insanely important. Another thing that, of course, this build is also using is a lot of Replenish Life. Um, replenish Life. Is it actually showing here, my Replenish Life? I don't actually know if it's on this sheet. Um, if it is, I'm blind or haven't ever looked at it. But anyway, um, there's a lot of Replenish Life on this build as well. And that's really good because you're not taking too much damage to your life. And so, even if you're not killing monsters and redeeming their bodies with Phoenix... Uh, once you take start taking damage, you're immediately kind of like regenerating it back up. So that's part of the features of an energy shield build. And even on LOD, like D2R or whatever, like other versions of Diablo 2 back in the day, Replenish Life has always been known to be solid on energy shield builds and to keep you from having to pump potions because your life just simply never goes down under any circumstances, even if you're not killing monsters. Um, used to be a very popular stat in PvP, especially, uh, for that reason, because you can't use, uh, potions, obviously. So you would just go around in your life and regenerate, and it's pretty good. Alright, so that's pretty much the stats, honestly. It's pretty solid, um, it's mostly about getting a lot of plus skills, getting a lot of negative enemy fire res, like you would mostly do on most elemental builds, and then FCR is not a priority, but it's nice. And then other stats on hardcore, you know, make us really tanky, such as the maximum mana, having a lot of mana in general, making our mana um, orb really, really, really high, which is good. And then, of course, you get a lot of, like, DR, you get a lot of um, replenished life, and you get all these other stats that just make this build flow and very smooth to play under any circumstances. Alright, now skills. Skills in this build... Uh, you're going to want to max out Inferno and its synergies, pretty obviously. Now, you would think I'd also max out Fire Mastery. Now, I would. Um, once this character, oddly enough, hits level 99, it has maximum Fire Mastery, no matter what, whether you prioritize it or not. Um, I would prioritize it more on Softcore, but um, because I'm on Hardcore, instead I've prioritized maxing out Energy Shield. So you max out Energy Shield... And then your mana is super efficient for tanking damage. That's really important. Of course, I've also gotten Shiver Armor as well. Because why? We have a decent amount of defense on our armor, so may as well just raise the defense and make it tougher for things to hit us as well. Which is really nice. And the Merc will, of course, block a lot of damage as well. So that's just more blocking. Anyway, it's good. Also, you put one point into Warmth. Now, you wouldn't have to do this if you have... Uh, leaf Staff, of course, is the more primitive version of this build, or just using a 9 skill Leaf, which I would be very surprised if they didn't nerf Leaf in uh, Season 10. They'll probably nerf it down to 6 skills from 9 if I had to guess, but um, it could be even worse than that. I don't know, but that's probably what I would do, so that makes sense. Anyway, um, yeah, so you actually do have to pull that. Like, Warmth is really good for mana regen, so obviously having one point into it and letting the plus skills carry it is pretty huge. So that's just another reason why your mana, like, never goes down and just becomes even more resilient. So it's very tanky. We do a ton of damage. We're even missing nine points into damage, and our damage is already this high. And as you'll see, I'm not lacking damage. So, um, nine more points, level 99. We hit a max build at exactly 99 and we will have maximum damage and maximum tankiness which is kind of cool all right at mercenary 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 let's go over his gear so his gear is basically just pretty basic stuff for an elemental build um, the strongest possible thing you can do on an elemental build and um uh, any Diablo 2 is put an infinity on an Act 2 Mercenary, so that goes for Project Diablo 2 as well. Of course, uh, if infinity wasn't useful for something, then that'd be pretty sad because it's very expensive, very rare runes for Malvarist. And we just lower the monster's resistances by 34 in a pretty large radius with this, so that's what level 12 Conviction does on PD2. It's a negative 34 debuff. Um, if you don't can't afford this though, you can always use an Act 1 Mercenary with Pus Spitter. And that will cast lower resistance, and that's a lot cheaper. And the lower resistance will have a similar effect. It's just not Im as immediate and instantaneous as Conviction, and the range is not quite as large. 
So, Infinity will obviously be your best choice. Um, Flickering Flame is best in slot here as well. So, believe it or not, we have 53k damage. So, when I take off a skill, I lose about 2k damage. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this fight. When I take off Flickering Flame, I also lose about 2k damage. So, a Flickering Flame is giving you the equivalent of one skill in damage if you get a good roll in it. Um, I imagine with a level 1 through 5, it might only give you like 1.5k or 1k, I don't know. Um, we got lucky. We rolled it really good. So, we rolled it maximum roll, the resist fire. Resist auras do give you elemental damage in PD2, and they amplify it. Not by a ton, but that's worth a skill there. That's an extra plus skill of damage there, so that's, that's nothing to sneeze at. Um, it's quite a bit of damage. Mercenary otherwise is wearing things that make him tanky and is able to sustain or just add to his damage or magic find and give him some attack speed. Uh, we actually don't have another socket in here because uh, I don't really need it. I could always put a Burun in here to give him more physical damage reduction, which would be pretty insane, but I could do that if I wanted to and he'd be even tankier. Um, that'd be nice. Mercenary currently has 30% DR, so you can get it closer to 40 or 50, and that'd be nice. It's kind of hard to get DR on the Merc when he's wearing Flickering Flame. If you ever want to make him, like, 50 DR, uh, you could always use Crown of Ages. You could put a Shaft Stop on him if you want him even tankier. But, I don't know, with all this Life Leech and DR, and, you know, he's even got MDR, he's got flat MDR, he's got flat PDR, a lot of it on this build, honestly. Uh, he's got Crit Strike, of course, and Glad Gladiator's Bane is really good for the Merc. It's got every stat you'd want. It's got CBF. It's got a lot of good things. Um, overall, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, this is giving him damage as well, so it's all good stuff. Um, the reason why I only have, like, plain resist corruptions is because I didn't, like, spend a, a whole ton of currency on these. These aren't that important, honestly. Um, you'll notice, though, that each res is holding up his res, making it 75, so that's all that is. Uh, if you're wondering why he has single res corruptions on there. It's because it's barely holding up his res, and he doesn't have res on anything else except for the uh, fire res from the resist fire aura, which doesn't only give you damage, it gives you like permanently like insane amounts of fire res. Uh, of course, you use an Act 2 Mercenary Defiance to give you 9% DR and 9 flat DR, so... It just makes you a lot of tankier. Um, there's nothing else you would use. Blessed Aim. Deadly Strike doesn't work on elemental abilities. It will help him out do a bit more damage. Uh, but it's a lot better that he stays alive and tanks. So this is really the only aura choice. And this is obviously the best outcome for this mercenary. There are other things you can wear on the armor and otherwise like Fortitude, Shaft Stop, or um, Leviathan, or a bunch of other things. Um, you don't need Templars because you yourself don't do physical damage, so it's better just to give the Mercenary more damage. And then, um, yeah, so like Flickering Flame and Infinity are the damage keys for you, and then everything I else is for the Mercenary. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this Forsaken camp. And thank you so much, guys, for the follows. Welcome to the Colt Xanadru stay. All right, and then let's go over the final, my gear. So my gear, there are options for my gear. In um, Season 9, I would say... You have the option of using a 50 faster cast rate leaf if you can get your hands on a 3 to Inferno staff, maybe even with fire mastery on top of that, uh, maybe even warmth on top of that, or energy shield, whatever. You can have a staff, and um, you can have a, nine, a plus 9 Inferno staff, and you can use that. Even in the end game, you can use that, and it gives you 50 FCR, gives you 9 skills, and it makes your damage really high. Um, and it only costs a turn a row, two sockets, and some kind of elite staff. I don't know if I'd recommend using one you could use in a car in the late game, because you only have 10 FCR on it. Um, that's going to require you having to sacrifice stats elsewhere for FCR. But you could even use that. I mean, plus 9 is insane. So you could even use the Leaf Staff uh, that you bought in Act 1 Normal. Um, once they nerf it, I would say that's probably no longer the case. Uh, plus six skills will probably lose out to most endgame combinations at that point, no matter what. Um, no matter what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, obviously, I think that would give us a little bit more damage, but maybe not that much more. Because uh, as you'll see, we have a lot of negative enemy fire resistance on this combination. 
This is the highest sustain combination that also gives you a ton of damage. So that negative enemy fire is negative 38, and that's without facets. We didn't even put facets in anything. Um, you can make your damage even higher. That's the crazy part. But I think the damage at some point definitely becomes overkill, um, especially on this build or like Arctic Blast. If you guys are playing that, you guys will probably notice that some of these channeling skills don't uh, suffer for damage very easily. So we put Iss in it instead for Magic Find. Um, making your magic find somewhere between 200 and 300 before the map, so the maps will add usually somewhere between 30 and 100 plus, depending on if it's tier 3. Um, I think this is a solid amount of MF, and you'll definitely find a lot mapping with that amount. So, uh, that's always really good as well. Um, anyway, so, yeah, so Ashuda's is really good. Obviously, we went for the fire damage stats. Uh, energy would be good, too. And then, of course, Phoenix. Uh, Redemption War is 10 to 12 now instead of 10 to 15. But it's still insane, giving you a lot of life and mana every time you kill a monster, which is all the time. So it's always topping you off. Um, of course, we have plenty of defenses in case that we're not. You know, we get hit really hard before we kill the monsters, but... Yeah, it's pretty insane. Obviously, life is good, too. Maximum res is really good. All very good stats. Uh, this combo, just in general, is very good. It's very good. It gives you a ton of damage. Uh, it gives you a ton of negative res, so any fire immune that you break, doesn't matter how much fire resistance the monsters have, it's down to zero. Um, I think if I calculate it, let's see here. We have 30 fire pierce. We have negative 34 on the mercenary, so it's 64. We have the skill itself, which breaks the fire immunities in a lot of cases as long as their fire resist isn't like i think 115 or 120 or over i'm not exactly sure at what res it can not break the immunes but yeah it's definitely like like if it's very like if it has a lot of fire resistance you can't break it but for the most part you got this too so that's a negative 94 and that's just negative 94 between the mercenary and my own skill itself and then on top of that, I have these two things. So that's negative 38. So that's... <laughs> we're already at negative 132 fire is. And then on top of that, this could get up to negative 10. And so that's negative 141 fire is. Now, in LOD, that would mean the monsters, in most cases, would have negative 100 fire is. And you're doing maximum damage. Now, in PD2, that's not always the case. Because once you drop a monster's resistance to zero, it's now half effective. So a typical monster will have somewhere between like 25 and 50 fire resistance, not even one that's immune. And then the rest of the fire resistance would be cut in half. But we're still dropping monster's resistance in a lot of cases all the way down to like negative 50, negative 70. Um, so it's no joke. Like they are getting hit insanely hard and the damage will hit them hard. Even if they had immunity, all this negative res will get them down to zero. So there's almost no monster that you can't drop to at least zero res, which is insane. Um, as long as, of course, you can break the immunity. So that's actually a pretty cool feature of the build. I thought I'd go over real quick there. Um, there's a lot of other item combinations you can use, though. So you can use Oculus if you want more magic find. Um, you can use Ming Song's Lesson, which would give you 6 skills and 85 FCR. That will give you a bit more damage, and if you get one with a lot of sockets, you can stuff it full of fire facets, and you can get even more damage. Also, it has lower resist on casting, which can lower their monster res even further. However, you don't have as much sustain with Ming Song, and of course, you don't have all the other features of the tankiness of Phoenix, or Ashuda's. So... And, of course, you would, you know, I, I, I think that amount of damage might be overkill in most situations. But then again, maybe you're playing Inferno and you want to fight Rathma or something and you want us to put on a Ming Song's Lesson, you could do that. Of course, typically for Rathma, you would want more maximum life. So usually to use Obsession, which is another option on this build where you would get a lot of plus skills and then you get a lot of maximum life. And it also gives you a ton of res. So you deal with the res there as well. And then you can maybe put MF elsewhere or facets elsewhere. But no matter what you do, there's a lot of options. As you can see, the Obsession Rune Word is also a pretty good option as well in this build. And, um, yeah. Now, since you're not constantly casting your ability and you're doing, like, channels, 
Something like Chromatic Ire would actually not be that great on an Inferno Sork, but it'd be great on something like Ice Barrage or Chain Lightning. Alright. So that's pretty much all the major options for like weapon combos. There's a lot of staves that work, as you can see, um, besides just the Shooters or Oculus and Phoenix. So keep that in mind. Uh, all right, so armors, there are a lot of options here. I decided to go for like maximum mana, basically, and replenish life. And then also getting some FHR and some FCR. And basically, Atmos gives you pretty much every stat you'd want offensively and defensively, but it's not like a full offensive item. Um, and also, since we don't like, need MPK, this isn't like a... Uh, because we have Phoenix, you can definitely uh, forgo like Q Hagen, K Hagen's. So you don't necessarily need that item. I think something like Atma's or, you know, is probably pretty solid. I mean, you could even go like Arcane's Valor if you don't need the FCR, but... And obviously, you can also go Ormus, and Ormus would be the highest damage option while also giving you more FCR. However, one thing to note is there's no Inferno Ormus. And Ormus, the only skill it can't roll that is a damage dealing skill in the game is Inferno, and that's because it has chains to cast, and you can't cast a channel by casting a channel that just wouldn't work and probably break the game and cause some kind of crash if it did so um there is no inferno ormus however you can still get a lot of damage just with the 15 percent fire damage plus facets so that's also a pretty good option as well um ormus is really good now in season nine in general so there's no reason to um, not consider ormus here um, out of all those things I kind of discussed, I really wouldn't consider any other armors. Um, Viper Magi is definitely good for like early game, but honestly it's not giving you the real chunky stats like something like Atma's would or um, uh, you know something with plus two skills like Q Hagen's if you just want more skills and maybe you want some FHR there as well or Ormus. So yeah, I mean these, these are probably your best options. As you can see, I really needed res in various places, so that's why we uh, stuffed it full of umruns. Um, you'll see these items don't really give res, so that's a problem. So we definitely need to make sure to hit max res in hardcore at least, but even on softcore, uh, mapping with trash res can be challenging, so keep that in mind. Um, Shaco. Alright, so you basically have like two main options for a helm, I would say. In the late game, you have Shaco or Kira's. That's pretty much it um, for an Inferno sort. Shaco will give you, of course, a lot of MF, gives you some PDR, gives you a lot of life and mana, which is great for energy shield, of course, and then some skills. Um, I got a CBF corruption to uh, make up for the fact that I didn't want to uh, trade for a Cham rune, which has the same effect, so there's not really much of a point. I could have traded for a Cham rune and got like a two socket of Shaco or something, but obviously it would be best as like a plus three Shaco with two sockets. You chuck a cham in there, you chuck an um in there, or you just chuck a cham and a facet or whatever. And then you uh, end up with even more skills. So that'd be even better, obviously. Obviously getting plus two corruptions, uh, getting better corruptions is possible in all of these items. This is like, a, like I said, it's like a mid late game version. It's not like any game, so it's not like a perfect Inferno Sork whatsoever, but it's definitely pretty good. And as you see, of course, with, you know, Phoenix and all the... Uh, all the uh, sustain it gives with the redemption war and everything else. I mean, this is pretty much end game. Like this is, you could just use this until the end, and it's just fine. But yeah. Anyway, like this, this is pretty good. The other option, of course, is Kira's, which has cannot be frozen built into it. And then you can get a lot of negative fire res. If you get one with a lot of sockets, you can like stuff it full of facets and get even more negative fire res, which is pretty insane. And then you get faster hit recovery. And Kira's gives a lot of resistances as well. So if you're lacking resistances, that's definitely one choice. I was trying, I was kind of going between the two helms myself, but I ended up landing on Shaco because I think with this particular setup, um, it made a little bit more sense. Also, it's a little tankier to go Shaco than Kira's. I think Kira's is probably better for softcore. Um, it's hard to say though. One way or the other, they're both good options. Even on softcore, Shaco is going to be good. So this is pretty basic, but just getting as many plus skills elsewhere as we can, um, always a good idea. Uh, getting, you could use Mars, of course, if you want more res elsewhere. You could use like plus two, plus three Mars. Plus four, obviously this could be even better. So I could have a plus four with like FCR, I could have one with life, I could have one with mana, I could have one with magic find. Um, I'll be looking for one of those, but maximum plus skills. 
Always a good idea. Frost burns gives us the negative 10 fire resistance, or at least up to negative 10. Uh, we got one with maximum mana as well, which is really good. The max of maximum mana. And then we have magic find. Magic find's a good stat. That's about it. Um, you can get one with faster cast rate if you want a faster cast rate there. Um, I would say that's like really the only other stat. Like there aren't too many stats you would need on your gloves. Um, you could go all resistances as well. You know, there's some other good stats in the gloves. So, but that's pretty good. And then you know, Stone of Jordan. You can go with two Stone of Jordans if you get your faster cast rate elsewhere. Or you're just doing whatever. Um, Stone of Jordan just really solid for energy shield in general. You get a skill and you get mana. I mean, that's everything you want for energy shields. Everything you want for damage. Um, instead, we're using also this ring just to barely hit that 63 breakpoint um, that I personally found. I found this ring, and it got a pretty solid corruption as well. Um, it's really good sustain ring. It's got a lot of res, too, so that's very nice. But you can use two Stone of Jordans, and two Stone of Jordans will usually be best in slot. Um, doesn't hurt to also have a little bit more sustain as well, but I'll be honest, like it's probably overkill sustain on this build with Phoenix. If you're going a staff, though... Uh, mana for kill and life for kill become a lot more valuable as stats in general. You might want to consider stuffing uh, Sir runes or jewels with MPK, LPK everywhere in your gear if you're missing that as well. So that's another option to socket into your gear. And it will also be pretty successful. At least for mapping. Obviously for bossing, you know, you stuff jaw runes, you know, or maximum res runes. You know, it just kind of depends on the setup. But that's pretty good. Max of mana, plus mana, pretty good. Um, dungos, pretty standard dungos. It's almost like what a normal one would uh, roll, but this one happened to roll. I think it rolled like DR and like one that was like at 12 or something to begin with, so yeah. It's uh, a little bit better than a standard one. Damage reduction, once again, a lot of vitality, replenished life, and hit recovery, so this is definitely a hardcore option on softcore if you want to max out your damage and get FCR. You're going to go a Ratnid's Mesh. Ratnid's Mesh also has maximum mana. I think this, though, makes me even tankier, so that's always good. Uh, don't want to die after losing the energy shield. So this is definitely a hardcore thing. Um, this is... you probably use a, a rack. Or you could even use um, T-Gods if you're afraid of lightning damage. But there's, there's a couple other options, but I'd use a rack or I'd use like a 20 FCR crafted belt or something similar. Uh, don't forget the crafts exist, like this one, for instance. Uh, you could also craft caster boots and also get a large amount of mana on your boots as well this one i'm kind of greeting on though this is a bountiful craft so i crafted it for a magic find and then i got another set of magic find and also has tri res so this is holding up my res pretty big time here um so yeah it's pretty good also i got a life corruption on it so that's not bad um might always try to get something even better but pretty solid pair of boots. The only thing I think that's wrong with these boots is no fast run walk. Fast run walk is nice with blaze, so getting fast run walk would be good. You can also get more fast run walk on your grand charms as well, like we have on one of them right here. Uh, we do have some fast run walk. We have 10. <laughs> but if you're doing a lot of running or you want to like do more of a uh, running version and don't want to use teleport as much and screw the FCR, you could do that as well. And then you would just um, get a lot of fast run walk down here. You get a fast run walk on your boots, around like 40 to 50% if you can. You might even use, um, you could even use, uh, whatchamacallit, um, the worm hide boots. <laughs> the unique worm hide boots, the, uh, Myrmidons, those things. I don't know why I can't remember the name right now. That's weird. Anyway, the 60 F the 60 fast run walk boots that can get up to 70%. A lot of people know what I'm talking about. It's fine. Um, Merman's Sprocket. Yeah, that one. I don't know why I couldn't remember it, but yeah. Anyway, that's also pretty good with Blaze. And honestly, the only thing you got to worry about then is desync. So that's pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good option on this build. Of course, you could, uh, I would recommend just having high MF or Merman's Sprocket or something similar. That's probably going to be what you're probably looking for. And then res is always good, especially on hardcore stacking some res. All right. And then, of course... We found this, which is pretty cool, in Arcane, but we did trade for some lifers. We have some planes still, because we're still working on them. We got even a strength one here, so that's kind of cool as well, kind of serving as a lifer to some extent. And then we have Geeds. Uh, obviously, if you want more damage, you can put another fire GC in and forgo the Geeds. I really like mapping with Geeds, though, because 
you don't really have extra gold to find anywhere else, and this makes it to where I could afford map orbs just by walking around and teleporting around the map. Um, and obviously the invisible gold that's invisible to my loot filter would get sucked up anyway, and then I'm able to afford map orbs. If you don't have a Geeds, then if you don't have gold to find anywhere else in your build, it might make it challenging to get enough gold to afford map orbs and rerolling orbs, and then you're going to have to trade for them. So, between the MF and the gold find, I tend to prefer to have a Geeds, especially if I'm just farming and not trying to max my damage out, but note you can get one more for damage. I do have one more I could use for damage if I want to max out my damage further, but it's not needed, as you can see. So, that's pretty cool. And then Torch, Annie, um, obviously the Annie could be corrupted, you could get plus two skills here as well. So there's plenty of places we can get more damage as you can see, you know, there's here, there's plus one here, plus one here, plus one here. Yeah, I mean you could, I mean you could get plus one here with a rack, like you could get easily 60, 70k damage, I'm not bluffing when I say that, you, you, it's pretty easy. And then the res, res life. Mana life. I found a perfect mana life small turn. There's no way I would have traded for something like this at this stage, but I found this. So this is 100% perfect. That's really cool. And then we also have one that's really solid too. I found an arcane. So that's neat. I think I found both of these in arcane actually. Um, both 79. I found a third one as well, but that one's a little bit lower and I can't sacrifice more res unless I want to lose out on some res. So I'm not going to bother with that yet until maybe we get better, I don't know, better torch or something. Alright, anyway, that's basically it. Um, one thing to note, of course, is that the uh, LCs, or large charms with fire damage, can help your damage as well, especially early game. But um, they lose, they just straight up lose to skillers on a Sork on any build because of the masteries. Masteries, you're not only getting plus to the skill with the uh, skiller, you're also getting plus to the mastery. And that will add even more damage. And pretty much makes it impossible that the 4% large charms could ever catch up. So, that's pretty much it. Um, pretty solid stuff. You can, of course, use Mage Fist as well on the uh, gloves, something I also didn't mention. That's going to give you FCR and a plus skill. Um, you're going to lose out on some mana. But overall, there's a lot of choices that I kind of went over on practically every piece of gear. So, hopefully you guys don't have too much of a problem. I mean, you can also use like a crafted Ami as well. Or just a rare ammy with three skills, 10 FCR. There's a lot of options. Um, but those are kind of all the main ones. Uh, 20 FCR ring is a thing as well. If you really want to hit that 105 breakpoint and you're just barely off it or something, um, you could use a ring like this, for instance. That's pretty good. And then, like I said, I could get more damage if I swap out the Geeds. Swap out the Geeds. And then, you know, at 50 to 56k. But, you know, it's all up to you. Uh, a lot of preferences here for sure. Um, I'm not going to map with that though, so that's all good. Uh, so there's definitely plenty of options, of course, we can use. And there's a lot of things we could definitely do to offset, like, negative FCR and maps and things like that. You know, 20 FCR belts. Um, whatever. Cool. So, that was a lot for sure. Um, we definitely went over a lot of stuff so you guys can understand your options on Inferno Sork. Now it might be a fun time to talk about some other things. So the memory staff, we can up our energy shield. Um, energy shield's got max efficiency no matter what. But if you have 89%, that means almost no damage is going to life at all unless we lose the energy shield. I don't really think the memory staff is necessary on this build, especially if you're kind of balancing your life mana. Um, if you don't, though, and put all your points into energy, I would say get that energy shield as high as possible so you don't take much damage to your life at all. And so using that would be pretty nice. And of course, we have the CTA and Lidless on Swap, which I didn't really spend any time on, because I'm sure you guys know this is best in slot on most builds, unless you're a Barbarian and you have your own battle orders, it's pretty much usually the case. Or unless you just don't need the extra life and mana and instead want to use, like, faster run walk on your swap, like on an Amazon or something. But, for the most part, that is usually the case. Alright, we're going to do some tier one maps as demos we're not going to demo tier three yet but um i'm definitely going to be doing those so but you guys of course could demo whatever you want the main key of course is going to be avoiding um maps with fire immunity now that being said there's a lot of fire immunities that aren't super high and then you could kill the regular monsters but the problem is is that when the elite fire immunes roll like fire enchanted then you can't and then you're relying on your Merc, or you just have to skip them because it's too slow to kill them. Um, 
So you're just losing a lot of elite kills if you do a fire immune map potentially. Even if you can easily kill them with, um, of course, Inferno. As you'll see, like anything that ends up fire immune as an elite, as long as it's not immune, dies effortlessly on this build. So as long as you don't have something that's already immune and fire enchanted, um, usually good to go. One thing to also mention, I guess I will talk a little bit about maps this season. So a lot of people are confused about the monster density changes. So basically there's more overall monster density in the maps, period. More, not less. Even though the percentages on the maps themselves tell a different story. Those percentages have been lowered to compensate so that you don't need to roll the maps themselves as much to get good density in the map. So they made, they basically boosted the map density by 60% and they lowered the true density of the map roll by 50% netting in an overall gain. What this means is that for a tier 1 map, instead of looking for uh, 100 plus density as you would have in the past, anything like 50 plus is pretty good. But I'd say you have a really solid map on your hands once you hit about 70 to 80% density, or less than that if you have the um, monster rarity roll, such as like on this map, where you get more elites and champion packs. Uh, 66 would be fine with this as well. Now this is on the base roll, so if you get 70 to 80 on the base roll, which most of these have, um, some of them don't, because I'm okay with like plus one area level or whatever, but I'd say like broadly speaking it may be like 60 to 80 on a tier one is good. Then on a tier two you're kind of looking for more like 80 to 100, and then on a tier three you're looking for like maybe 90 to 110, 95 to 115. And that's the base density. Of course, if you have Worldstone Shards and have been farming them up, it's always better to slam the map. It's always good to slam the map, and you should always do it. And uh, you feel ashamed if you're not doing it. So we'll slam this one, for instance, and then you get Monster Rarity. There you go. And it's got 79 base density, and there you have it. Um, this one has a guest monster. We have Reanimated Hordes, which is pretty nice. And notice how it has Drain Life. Well, fun, fun fact is drain life on energy shield is usually pretty annoying because it goes right through your energy shield, but when you have all the replenished life that I made sure to have on my build through the item choices, um, well, as you can see, my life isn't going down. As a matter of fact, we still have positive um, life, so there's that as well. Oh yeah, the game server's going down. That's alright. Alright, make sure to get on your shiver armor and your energy shield. And then you can make this here. Notice the charger zombies do a pretty decent amount of damage, but as long as I'm like going around passing this shit, it's pretty good. Look how easy this is, man. Monsters just die all around you. Phoenix is OP, gives us all of our life back. Yeah, I wasn't noticing the um, the, the timer on the game. Oops. That's okay. Like we can just remake another map. This is more to give people an idea in the video. We got plenty of maps. That's alright. Not the end of the world. One thing that's a little underrated too is the defense versus missile actually. So I have pretty good defense with shiver armor, but a hidden stat is actually giving me probably almost like 8,000 defense uh, versus missile because of the uh, phoenix. Notice I haven't had to use a single potion. Not even one. It's pretty cool, right? And I've been taking a lot of damage, too. And then, of course, with the map adding us MF, we got like almost 300 MF, which is really solid. Of course. The game's about to shut down on us, so we can just remake a different map. 
Oh yeah, we got everything we need on this build. This build's pretty solid, but as you can see though, it's pretty e it's pretty easy to go. Pretty easy stuff. Um, we could make a different map instead, of course, which would be pretty cool. We actually ended up keeping some of these maps. Um, can do one with dolls even, because you have quite a bit of range. Negative two to maximum all resistances, but we get monster rarity and density. That density is really good, actually, on a uh, tier one, 116. It's pretty good. Now, what I can also do here is I can also show you guys that you don't need the energy shield staff either if you don't want. Is that another tier one here? Oh, we got a Blood Moon map. Nice. Those are valuable. For those of you guys that don't know, they're worth quite a bit. <laughs> or we could do it ourselves, honestly. I'd probably do that, honestly. This build's pretty good in Blood Moon. Just uh, melt the cows. That could be fun. It's worth a lot for a reason. It's because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's money. Blood Moon, super efficient map. Hierophants don't look like they do that much damage in a tier 1 anymore, by the way. Uh, density of this map is kind of nutty, actually. It's like I'm in a tier 3. <laughs> Look how tanky I am, though. Like... <laughs> it's so tanky. I can just jump wherever I want. Pretty cool, right? Wow, we got a Zard of the Mad map too. That one was actually still fire immune. Interesting. Okay, that means his uh, fire enchanted actually gave him a lot of fire res. That means the base res of the zombies must be pretty high. Oh well. Mercenary will take care of it. He's pretty stalled. Oh, there's booties. Nice. Alright, the other thing you can do, like I said, you don't even have to teleport. So the teleport will actually, for the first second, will actually reduce your damage. Obviously, you'll see there's a debuff by 26% in my case. Could be uh, less though if you have like a plus skill staff, like a Ming Song's Lesson. Mercenary will instantly heal himself back up. He's doing pretty good surviving the blast, honestly. Looks like we built him pretty well. But notice though, if you just go faster run walk, I could just run around with Blaze too. Just fuck teleport, you know. Blaze is really good, gives us a ton of fast run walk, so. Oh wow. Oh, that's the first time I actually had to use a potion there. That's when we got like double double cold and chain exploded. I didn't even really have to use a potion there, I just did, because our mana got kind of low. Got down to like 500 or something. Nice. Dolls on hardcore. Does this make anyone nervous watching the video? Let's give you guys flashbacks. Vietnam flashbacks. I'm sure it is. 
course, the dolls do have a delayed explosion timer on PD2, though, so it's not quite as brutal as them just blowing up in her face, though. So that's always nice. You don't have to, like, take maximum damage unless you want to. <laughs> They're in the trees! Yeah, exactly. Alright, battle orders is about to go out. You can always do that one. Density is good for a tier 1 here, though. Blizzard damage used to be higher. It's kind of afraid for my energy shield against those things, but it's not too bad. Small term. So many things drop on maps that, like, sometimes I get sidetracked and don't pick things up. I would say that Sewers is definitely a better map for this build, though, because it looks like the zombies sometimes get fire immune if they get fire enchant. It's because they have so much res. Immunity I can't even break with Inferno, so that's kind of interesting. Even with the Inferno on them. So fun fact, Infinity and Inferno, the negative res on them seems to stack, but the uh, immunity breaking effect does not seem to stack. Which is kind of weird. I think they're like separate entities to some degree. I think it's the same on Arctic Blast. Yeah, there's definitely some fire enemies possible in this map, for sure. This is an okay map. There's no like native fire enemies, but it wouldn't really matter much anyway. Yeah, there's definitely some possible fire immunes though, which means that fire resistance overall on this map, despite having no immunities, is actually kind of high. There's definitely like decent amount of like decently high fire immune, uh, fire resistance in there. Another thing that's actually interesting about Energy Shield is that it's really good at blocking physical damage, right? And that includes the doll explosion damage. So you'll notice even if I do get exploded by a doll, I don't really take all that much damage. Like, I'll get exploded purposely there, just to show you. I don't take that much damage from that. And of course, you can use Firewall as well to supplement your damage if you want, but it's not necessary. Yeah, he's uh, he's also pretty weak, especially with Energy Shield. Don't really have to worry about dying. You can have whatever words they want. It's not gonna help. Got a Thunderstroke. Nice. Purple light I'm on the loop filter. Let's go. Filter, by the way, is the... A dev DH filter in the launcher, it's accessible. If you guys like the filter, I know people ask about it every single YouTube video I make. Uh, maybe I should start mentioning it more. So that, uh, yeah, people will fucking know what to do to get it. There you go! But yeah, anyway. Impossible. Pretty good demos, right? As you can see, uh, damage is pretty crazy. And as you saw in the sewers, it's even easier to, uh, Traverse the sewers. Some of these monsters can actually be a little troublesome because of fire is, but that's about it though. You can pick up a crafting base if you want. Oh, it's only a plus two on the T stroke. Oof. That's alright. It's a pretty good free item still. Alright, anyway, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, pretty awesome stuff. Learn all about the Inferno Sork. As you can see though, as long as there's no fire means in the map, you're good to go. You also know what kind of maps to look for, and 
Corruptions are almost always good. They're always going to make the map better. Maximum life can always be a little bit troublesome, but you can see that our damage is really high. They're basically instantly melting pretty much everything. Hopefully you guys enjoy the build, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Monold heal. Aw, oh, man. Insane. Definitely got some good maps that map, though. That's pretty good. Got Stalker's Cool. Hey, that's pretty good, actually. Good items. Alright, anyway, you guys. See you guys next time. Smash it in Season 9, PD2, and beyond. Inferno Sork. A new monster is born.